Welcome to The Value Script, the podcast where we bring value every episode for the everyday person. We're your hosts, Lonnie and Meredith Carmichael. Today we have a very special guest who we are excited to bring to our podcast. We have Ryan Wade, certified trauma counselor. He is a skilled member of clinical modalities such as EMDR, hypnotherapy, family and individual trauma-informed counseling, applied behavioral analysis, specifically serving the autism spectrum disorder population. Ryan is currently in his doctorate in clinical mental health counseling program, which will accompany his master's in forensic psychology and his bachelor's in behavioral science. Ryan combines his extensive knowledge and background to create a whole person approach to healing, providing services to the community at his private practice here in Midtown Phoenix. And we are excited to have him because he has helped our family tremendously. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So Valentine's Day. Yeah. Just (laughs) last week. Yeah. I wonder, um, do you see an uptick or a downtick in your uh, demand for counseling services around (laughs) Valentine's Day? (laughs) You know, I'm going to tell you what, Valentine's Day is about being in love with yourself. I think first and foremost. Wow. That is not what I thought you were going to say. Well, I know, I know. (laughs) But no, that's what truly, that's what I find is that, um, I mean, yeah, you know, couples are trying to work their stuff out. But really, at the end of the day, when you're good with yourself, you're a great partner. You're a phenomenal partner. You know, and we were mentioning right before the show, you you dropped, I think, a little nugget that I wanted to talk about, where you said most people you have found mm-hmm. are not happy. Mm-hmm. Correct. Why do you suppose that is? Um, I think it's just because we haven't really been taught, you know, how to be. Um, there's a lot of beliefs, limiting beliefs that we have um, based upon our upbringing and um, you know, what we were told was acceptable, not acceptable. Um, there's the whole uh, stigma as we talked about earlier with, with therapy, right? So, um, people are scared to go to therapy. People are scared about change. Um, so, you know, with therapy, I think the, the best thing about that is we make it as painless as possible. Right. And, you know, that's, how do you do that? Well, um, coping skills, um, hey, change isn't so bad, right? We've got our support system. Putting things into place that, um, well, that, that normalize, you know, that normalize that we've all got stuff. And, and as you said, you know, um, my observations are that people just aren't really typically happy. So the fun thing about therapy is that people are starting to become more and more aware, which awareness is really empowering, right? And then when you're empowered, you become happy because you start to identify what actually does make you happy and make those changes. Like you said, I know before we started realizing, I was gonna say seeking therapy, but realizing that we needed it, Mm -hmm. you know, before that it was like, you go to counseling when you have a problem. Mm -hmm. That's for the broken couples, right? right? Mm -hmm. The people that, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think one of the things that hit us and really caused some damage in our relationship was we didn't go soon enough and we didn't realize we needed to go soon enough. We right. thought we had a pretty good marriage, mm-hmm. you know, and, and as far as our relative circle of friends thought we had just as good a marriage as anyone. Mm-hmm. And we did mm-hmm. <laughs> actually. We did. But, but, but I think, but I think you were right about like, people don't have the coping skills mm-hmm. right, that they need. And everybody's got stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Everybody's got something, some sort right. of hurt or pain or, you know, trauma, something. And mm-hmm. they just don't know how to deal with it. Right. And so they, they do the best that they can, but mm-hmm. lots of times we make it worse for ourselves because we don't have the correct skills to be able to really progress out of it. And then it just mm-hmm. gets stored in the body. Well, right? and think about, yeah. And think about it like this is addictions, right? Um, <clears throat> we have addictions because we don't know how to deal with our shit, you know, mm-hmm. bottom line. And, and so we overuse and overuse because it's all we know. So, you know, there's no need to judge. It's kind of like the, you know, as a trauma therapist, I I look at this, right? The alcoholic comes in and in typical therapy, it's like, oh, you're an alcoholic, shame on you. Mm -mm. A trauma therapist- Always going to be damaged and broken. Yes, yes. And stop putting those labels on people because what, what it is, is that I drank alcohol to cope and deal the best way that I knew how to do it at the time awesome you're here you know you're 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 you at least dealt with it up to this point so now let's take you and i always say it take you from surviving to thriving because you know an addiction is just a 
it's a survival skill. It's trying to get through the day. Absolutely. I love that. And I love that. Take you from surviving to thriving. Uh, that's a phenomenal phrase. Um, and I, my understanding with addiction is too with relapse. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times there's a lot of hard feelings of shame and guilt mm-hmm. when there's relapse. And I think it's important to help people understand that the only reason, typically, the reason you relapse mm-hmm. is because you still have more healing to do. Correct. You have more stuff to unload. Mm-hmm. It's just an awareness for us. That's really all it is. You know, we, we, we judge the mistakes of the past, but those mistakes give us the information needed to move forward. You know, yeah. hey, this is what's happening. So based on this, right, based on the results that you don't like, all right, so where do you start making those changes? And like you've taught us before, okay, this is information. Mm-hmm. This problem, all this is. issue that came up, mm-hmm. this is information. And it tells us we need something. Mm-hmm. And it helps you get your power back rather yeah, than feeling shameful. Like, oh my gosh, like, why are we fighting again? You mm-hmm. know, like, what is going on? Okay, this is information. We well, right. That. And I've had that so many times with couples. Um, I remember one in particular you know, they had a big fight and and she's like, man, I thought we were doing good. And, you know, very upset about that. And I said, well, but let's talk about frequency, right? Frequency of fights, you know, how many last month compared to, you know, this one this month, that's success. That's huge. You know, so you have a fight. Okay. Now what do we do about it? Right? What, what's the information that we get from that? And that perspective, that mindset is, so much freer and easier, you know? And that's the the painless part about therapy is we start to take away all of that shame and just understand that these are just, it's, it's really just tools, right? At that point. Yeah, when you mentioned the painless part, I was thinking of peace. Mm-hmm. And sometimes since we're on it, you bring up in sessions sometimes, um, you know, having the gospel of peace, mm-hmm. right? And, and that's that means... Some things to, to different people, but in a counseling sense, how do you apply that? Um, that's the forgiveness part, right? I mean, that's the, that's the we're all human and, um, oh, well, I messed up, <laughs> you know? So the only thing I can do about it right now is just do better tomorrow. And again, less pressure, right? That just feels like so much less pressure. And it is about getting people into peace, which means coherence. So that's a big word lately. Coherence just means, you know, your heart and your mind are in line, right? So they agree. You feel that kind of that peace going on inside internally, you know, and that's actually healing. You know, that that's really where the body, the mind, the heart, the nervous system, that's where you actually start to heal is in that space. How many people feel that space on a, on a, on a daily basis, you know? Right. Uh, they're they're in go 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 and and trauma and sadness and pain and you know and judgment coming in and the world's a scary place (laughs) you know so how do we keep the person how do we keep their systems as safe as possible so that they can make the best choices right because i mean when you're safe when you're processed when you're good with you um it doesn't matter what goes on in the outside world. You know, you're just kind of floating through life. And that's, that's really freedom right there, right? So that to me is like the gospel of peace. Uh, being accountable of your stuff and just saying, here's what I'm going to do differently tomorrow. And it helps it. you not take on all the negative emotion of people around mm-hmm, you that mm-hmm. are, because that can be draining, mm-hmm. you know, and hard. And you're like, gosh, right. how do I fix this situation? Well, like if you can be calm and, mm-hmm. and be okay yourself, like you right. can make those decisions that oh, are absolutely. better and not just emotional. Right. And, and you know, what you're talking about, Meredith is, is they call that in therapy. Um, it's a, it's a depleting circumstance. It's a depleting situation. And, And so when we start the healing process, what we really actually need to do is look at all of our situations, our relationships, what, like when I get home and I'm with this person, I just feel ah, drained, you know, I need to go home and I need to recharge. That's a clue right there that there's something going on. There's a depleting situation there, right? So being with that person not saying that the person's bad, right? It just means the situation. Maybe there's some tweaks that need to be, you know, the, the things that need to be changed there in the relationship to counteract that. But there is something there that is draining you, right? 
Um, and so that is that is something that we want to start looking at because we you know we go through the day just tired and worn out and all of that, but it's because we're not having enough relationships, situations, environments that are adding value, you know, mm-hmm. and benefit to our everyday lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's key. I mean, you you work on yourself from the inside out. You know, typically we're going to chase everything. Let me let me go out and date this person, right? And, and chase after that person because that makes me feel good about myself, right? Or, you know, whatever it is, we're constantly chasing things to make ourselves feel better, but really don't look to the outside sources, you know, go in here. And when you're good, like everybody sees that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's when the opportunities really come to you. Yeah. Yeah. That energy start, the good energy Mm -hmm. starts to come to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh goodness. I see that a lot in Mm -hmm. friends and family members Mm -hmm. that, you know, just don't recognize what they are doing themselves to invite the negativity that, that they're mm-hmm. wanting to push away, mm-hmm. you know? Well, I mean, and, and, and think about it. I mean, we've talked about this, right? Life is just, it, it's progress. It's, it's learning. It's um, mastering emotions, right? So it's just a game. It's a, it's a strategic game that we're playing, you know? So if, if I understand that, I can look at my relationships and go, here's what would help them, right? Or here's what would get the good result. And you just set up the environment for success, you know? And you see your people start to be more and more successful and make better choices, right? Because they feel safe to do so. I, yeah. It starts with us. Totally. You know? mm-hmm. I can totally appreciate what you're saying. Um, before... Um, a couple of years ago, I was a total mess and it was, I noticed it everywhere. I noticed it at work. I noticed it at home. I noticed it mm-hmm. um, anywhere I went, even in my social circles, um, things started to feel like they were fraying. And then I decided mm-hmm. to, to get clean and start taking a healthy approach mm-hmm. and uh, marathon at 75 hard. And really within that couple months of doing that, all of a sudden I noticed I was happier at work. Mm-hmm. And everybody else was too. Right. And the office ran smoother. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned that to, to um, my partner that I work with. And, and I was like, hey, Dr. B, um, things are just a lot better now. Like yeah. even the patients are happier. I was like, what is it? He looks at me like, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, I know, it was you. <laughs> right. You know, you, you, you were bringing us, I mean, he didn't necessarily say you're bringing us now, but he's like the change that you've made has had a positive impact right. everywhere. And the only we difference is that change. Mm-hmm. And so, like you said, like once you get even better alignment, mm-hmm. then all you open yourself up to have a good things come to you. Right. Right. Well, and then speaking of that, right. Um, I, I've been seeing lately how important, like, Morning routine is morning meditation, right? Because uh, Dr. Dispenza says this. Um, he's like, if it if it takes you two hours in the morning to get to coherence, then you do that. That's important, you know. I mean, because you can look at this and go, oh my gosh, two hours, right? You know, but is that that's a waste? I got to get to work. All I have all these things to do. But the fact of the matter is, that makes or breaks a day. Right. When you can get into that coherence and you feel the peace, right, your day is so much better. Everyone around you feels so much better. I mean, it's all just it's such a domino effect. I heard heard Dr. Joe say one time since you brought him up, um, everybody needs to meditate for 20 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. Unless you're really, really, really busy, Mm -hmm. then you need to meditate for an hour a day. (laughs) Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, and, and, you know, the whole thing with meditation, I I love it because most of this stuff used to be so, you know, hippie Hippie. dippy, right? Mm -hmm. And, but but the research is now there, which love the research um, and the evidence-based types of techniques and here's how it helps. And um, that just helps so much, right? That, That gives us so much power and knowledge. And I love that, um, you know, meditation is really just about processing your stuff and just being right, you know, at the top of the day. And, um, meditation is, is, is dealing with the emotions of the heart. It's dealing with like, I'm going to process this in my brain. Here's the logic. Here's why they did that. Oh, okay. I can forgive them because of this, right? You're kind of just going through everything and, you know, trying to relieve some of the pressure, trying to relieve some of that stress or those triggers or those emotions, 
Because triggers put us back into the past all the time. You know, you think of something and, oh, here's when, you know, so-and-so did this to me. So I better be on the lookout and I better be on the guard because somebody else could do that to me too, right? So our systems are really hardwired to just assess risk. I mean, that's all. You and I have talked about this before. It's like the caveman can, doesn't come out of the cave and go, you know, beautiful day and sky and, you know, it's it's about there's there's a tiger there. There's a, you know, we're looking at everything that's going to cause me harm and danger. And our systems do the same thing. And so if I get in a fight with somebody, then there's going to be parameters there, memories, triggers that will clue me into, oh yeah, remember in this situation, I'm not safe. And so I need to be on guard. Well, that's part of the depleting um, situations is that our neuro, you know, networks um, are, constantly putting energy there and 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 focus because we're running all those scenarios in our mind of when we were harmed and here's where we need to protect ourselves you know so i'm gonna dive into that a little more um yeah you you mentioned a minute ago how your your heart can send messages to your brain Mm -hmm. and you know through the vagus nerve nerve, and then you know we've also talked about or it's commonly used phrase i think the trauma is stored in the body Mm -hmm. can you speak to that like how does that really can can you explain that to to um, somebody like me that really doesn't understand what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I always use um, I always use the the panic attacks that I used to experience as the example because I you know this is my frame of reference and I think this is a good way to explain it. So I noticed that um, when I started to have panic attacks, it was always in social situations. So some sort of social anxiety. So somewhere you know I, I took on the belief that it was unsafe to be in this social situation, right? Whatever the case may be or whatever that trigger was. So then I would go into panic attacks. Well, it's so interesting because that is in fact a survival skill. That's to keep me safe because even though I'm not clued into that there's anything here unsafe, which typically there's not, right? It's just that our systems are saying that there is. It's that neural network that's running in the background again. Um, So I look at the situation, I think it's fine. My system says, nope, you're in trouble. I'm gonna give you a panic attack, make you, you know, force you to leave the situation, go to the bathroom, get in the stall, you're safe, you're welcome. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the crazy part is that I hated those things because it's like, you know, I, I, I would start panicking and, you know, freaking out in front of people. And that's embarrassing. It's humiliating. But it was, but it was my system saying, hey, you're in trouble and I'm gonna get you out of this, right? So with preventative measures, it's, it's about me recognizing that, oh, I'm about to go into a panic attack. So I'm going to excuse myself. I don't have to have that panic attack, right? If I get myself out of that, perfect, right? So, but what I noticed, Lonnie, was that, um, you know, I thought to myself, the brain is really powerful. So I should be able to control these things with my thoughts. Right. So I tried, you know, I tried. And I swear every time I did that, it was worse. It was terrible. And um, I, I found a body technique, a, a coping skill that I would use. So I would go into the stall ahead of time, do this technique, and then I could go out and I was fine. I would not have a panic attack at all. And, um, and so years later, I finally realized why this was the case. And this is why like EMDR is so good is it brings in a body component, you know? So therapy isn't really just about talking things out, right? It's about bringing in, okay, the body has all of these sensations going on too, that are going to cause these issues. So I have to deal with that as well as the mind, right? So I realized what was happening with the body technique is I was calming the heart down. So I became a, a heart math um, therapist and what they, they, they studied the heart and the heart is very smart. It has emotions, a central nervous system. It's the second brain. So, and it communicates so much more to the brain through the vagus nerve than the brain even communicates back. So what was happening was, is even though my thoughts were, you're cool, calm, and collected, my heart was going, "Mm -mm, mm-mm, you're not okay. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So of course it was worse, right? So if I bring in that body component and get the heart at that rhythmic pace, well, that's optimal for healing, you know? And that's coherence too, because now my heart's okay. My brain's saying, oh yeah, I'm okay, you know? But if you get the heart in that 
in that rhythmic pace. Now the information of the heart is we're safe, we're calm, we're good. And then we're going to pull you out of fight or flight. Yeah. So that's why it could just pull me out like nobody's business. It was, you know, right. and, and, um, and so I'm finding that, you know, working with, uh, it, doing like body work still at the office, we still do body work and alignment and all of that because it is stored in the body. And if you don't address emotions, guess what? It's going to show up in disease, illness, tightness, pain, whatever it is. The body itself should always be able to heal. If it's not healing, it's because of you, something you're doing, you know? And, and so, I mean, that's okay. It's not a blame game or anything. It's just, Hey, you can actually work this out. That's pretty powerful. You know, you can take control of your health if you understand this and you can mitigate all the symptoms, you know, that you experience. That's powerful. So powerful. You know, so uh, it's, it's way less powerful when I think to myself, I've got this going on and I don't know what to do about it. Right. I've got these panic attacks. So I guess I better just stay home. Mm, no, thank you. You know, right. you yeah. know, let me, let me figure out how to overcome that. You need to live your, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You'd be able to live your life and not be in your head. Well, exactly. Exactly. Like and literally stuck in your head. Yeah. Right? And that's it. And see, and that's the cool thing about coherence too is coherence is going to get the body into that natural state of, Hey God, this, this is healing right here, right? Get familiar with it. And, and that's what we do in the office is I have a feedback machine. Um, I haven't done it with you guys, but, but basically this feedback machine shows you or shows the person hooked up to it when they're in coherence. It, it goes off of the heartbeat yeah. is what it is. And when they are in coherence, it's important for me as the therapist to say, all right, now pay attention to this, you know, because likely they haven't felt this a lot. Mm -hmm. And the idea is whatever you're feeling in coherence, get used to that, get familiar with that, because we want to start to um, give you the tools to produce that more and more and more throughout their day, you know? Very good. Well, hey, I think this is uh, probably a good spot for a break. Yeah. Um, so we got... We're here again with Ryan Wade, certified trauma therapist and all around great guy. And um, thank you, sir. I want to, I want to. I paid to, you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> he actually didn't yet. <laughs> yeah. But well, once it's still around the corner. No. <laughs> we, uh, I want to, I want to go over and I want to share with the audience in, in our next episode. So stay to be sure and make sure you watch that. Um, how Ryan helped us just a couple weeks ago when we had a pretty epic fight and um, it was not the way I thought he was going to do it. Mm -hmm. It was not traditional. We go in, Hey, this is what we did. And the counselor tells us, well, this is what you, you know, this is what you should think. This is how you should feel. And they just, they kind of tell you your stuff. So stay tuned for that. It'll be an awesome episode and we appreciate you listening as always. Don't forget to click any click like share and subscribe. If you found any value in this episode today, we know your friends will too. So please go ahead and share that with them. They will thank you. And we'll see you again on the next episode of Value Script. <laughs>